welcome to Programming for Fun with Scratch. This is episode six. My name is Deeth Elzo with the Richmond Public Library. I'm a digital services technician. And today we're going to be creating, building a, a clone of the classic arcade game Asteroids. And in the process, we'll look at some advanced techniques for movement in Scratch. So I'm starting us off right in the, the middle, right in the script. And um, we're going to do a quick walkthrough of the code, and then we'll look at some of the things that we can add to it. So this isn't a complete clone of Asteroids, uh, but it's pretty close and it's playable at this point. So that's um, that's where we'll get started, and then we'll we'll look at ways that we can extend it. So we only have three sprites. We have the ship, which uh, let's get that on an actual ship. Um, so the ship is this this triangle. Um, then we have the asteroid itself, which you can't see, um, and it's transparent here. So in any case, uh, we'll look at the asteroids in a second. Um, and then we also have the missiles. And yeah, there are missiles and asteroids are hidden at the beginning of the game. So you can't see much with that, but if you, uh, look at the link to the project project that's in the description of this video then you can uh, you can see for yourself and it's a little um, easier to make out on your own computer what those are and you're going to see them in in action well let's actually just let's play a quick game so you see where we're going with this and what we've got so far uh, when green flag clicked let me get my hands on the right keys here all right so yeah. So you can see, uh, we start off with some big asteroids floating around. Then we, um, as we, as they, we shoot them, they break up into smaller and smaller asteroids. Now, so far I haven't had to move, but movement is actually one of the interesting things about asteroids. So when we fire our engine, we gain momentum. And so we, um, we keep drifting, not in the direction we're facing anymore, but uh, in the direction that we've given ourselves momentum in. So it's kind of got a little bit of a physics engine. Now also, what happens when we hit the screen is we don't bounce off, but we actually uh, wrap around. And we wrap around both, the, the, um, both edges, the top and bottom, as well as the, um, the sides. Now, you see, I've destroyed all of the asteroids, and in the coin-op game, what would happen then is I would get a new screen full of even more asteroids, and it would keep going until I, I failed and lost all my lives. Now, in this, we only have one life and only one screen of asteroids, so we'll look at extending both of those things, and there's no scoring. So these are all things that we can add as we go. But we've got all of the basics. We've got asteroids. The asteroids themselves wrap around the screen. Uh, the missiles we shoot wrap around the screen. And the ship wraps around. So we have the physics going on for all of those. So let's look at how that's done. So this is the ship. And um, so we have three costumes. Um, so we have the, the ship, which is just that triangle. We have a triangle with a, a bit of flame uh, for the rocket. And then we have an explosion. So for if we get hit by a, an asteroid, we have one sound, which is uh, when we fire the engines. And we have a, um, a basic script. One, when we hit, click the green flag, we had call a custom block called initialized. That we've created down here in custom blocks, my blocks. And then we have a custom block called play. And this is a common um, way to organize your code for a game. Initializes where you set everything up once, and play is the loop that you go through over and over again for the rest of the game. And by doing this, you can we can make it easier to have uh, an intro screen, a close an end screen, um, and multiple levels and stuff because instead of play they can just be each level or each screen can have its own uh, custom block so initialize we have a lot 
to initialize here. So we switch our costume to be the, the ship, not firing or exploding. Um, and then we have this X and Y, X speed and Y speed. We have an edge type, extended space. We have um, maximums of X and Y. We have a, a speed increment and uh, whether or not we are playing. All right. So we go to, we move the ship to the center of the screen, point in direction 90, which is going to be pointing off to the right. And then we broadcast create large asteroids and wait. All right, so that's all of our initialization. So uh, why do we have this, this X and Y, by the way, these are uh, custom variables. These are not the um, X position and Y position that are built into Scratch. And the reason for that is because Scratch limits you to X and Y positions that are within the stage. You can't really take a sprite off the stage because then you, you could lose them very easily. So that's to protect you and to make it easier to write code where it keeps everything contained here. But sometimes you do want to um, at least simulate going off the stage and either going around or um, in our case, wrapping around. So we take control of the, uh, the X and Y and have our own values for that, that um, then we map back to, to scratches. So here we initialize, we've, we've done set up all of our variables, some of which um, you'll notice I have different ways of spelling them uh, or capitalizing them rather. So if they are lowercase, they are specific to this sprite. If they are all caps, it is a constant that doesn't isn't expected to change in the course of the game. And if it is, uh, we'll also see some where they are capitalized, which are shared between between sprites. All right. So the main thing that this initialization does besides set up all of these variables and choose a um, choose a costume is calls this create large asteroids and wait. And so we're gonna see what that does when we look at the asteroid sprite, because that's what listens for it. Um, but let's finish looking at the ship first. So the next thing we call after initialization is play. And play sets up our familiar, if you've been watching this series or done any scratch programming, you should be familiar with this forever loop. So for the rest of the game, we're going to go through this loop and we're going to do what's inside it over and over each frame of the game. And so our forever loop um, or game loop so it has three custom blocks in it. The first one says check keys, which is uh, looking for player input on the keyboard, then move and then check collisions. And so that's what we're gonna do every time we go through, uh, have each frame of, of animation in the game, we check to see if there's player input, um, we, and then we move the ship, and then we check to see if the ship has run into anything. Okay, so check keys. Well, the keys that we're using right now, uh, space key has a custom block fire missile, which I've misspelled, let's change that. Okay, um, so if the space is pressed, fire a missile. If the key D is pressed, we rotate clockwise five degrees. If the key A is pressed, we rotate counterclockwise five degrees. And if the W is pressed, then we switch the costume to ship two, which is the, the ship with the flames coming out the back and call the accelerate custom block. And then um, is playing, oh, is playing isn't about it, whether we're playing the game, it's about whether we are playing um, a sound. And so when we're accelerating, uh, if we're not playing the sound that goes with accelerating, if it's set to zero, 
uh, means we're not. Then we start the sound of space noise, and then we set is playing. Because we don't want to start that sound over and over every frame. So we check to see if we've if it's already playing, we don't do anything. If we're, it's not, then we start playing it and we um, set a variable so that we know it's playing. Now, I'm not sure what should happen. Oh yeah. Uh, if key W is not pressed, so that's the else here, we switch the costume back to the regular ship with no flames, set is playing. Uh, if is playing is one, we stop it. So we stop all sounds and set is playing to zero. So we say we're not playing the acceleration sound. Hopefully that's all clear. If you held the W key down long enough, I think we would play that acceleration sound and it would end. But then we would be going too fast to really, um, you'd run into an asteroid very quickly. So I'm not gonna worry about that too much, but you could have a check for that if it's uh, finished, started again, something somehow. Uh, now we call a custom block here called accelerate. And what that does is we change our X speed and Y speed. And this is this looks complicated. We have, um, we actually can take this block we don't need the times one, but oh well. Essentially, we take the sign of the direction we're facing in, and that is going to give us a number between um, a negative one and one. Uh, based on uh, the angle, it's going to give us a length to, uh, in that direction in the x coordinate. Um, and then we take that net for number that it goes from negative one to one, and we multiply it by how fast we want to be going, the speed increment that we set at the beginning. And that gives us um, how much uh, direct, how much speed in the x direction we should add to our x speed. And this is what gives us momentum. So our x speed is how fast we're continuously traveling in the x direction, which is left to right. Negative is going to move us left, positive is going to move us right. And this only changes when we accelerate in one direction or another. So in a lot of games, you only move if you press the keys. In this game, you only change your speed when you press the keys. But once you started moving, you basically continue moving and drifting through space um, forever after that. So you, if you move, for instance, up and you want to stop, you would have to point down and fire your uh, your thruster again to come to a stop. And it would be hard to do perfectly. You'd probably end up drifting a little bit in, anyways. Um, the other um, is we change the Y speed. And the only difference here is that we use cosine instead of sine. These are the opposite of what it is in a lot of graphic programs. So if you ever have used uh, JavaScript or Python, you would use cosine for X and Y for, and um, sine for Y. But the reason for that is in Scratch, a zero points up. The, the angle zero points up, whereas most um, programming system zero points to the right. So it's off by 90 degrees. And sine and cosine are also functions that are 90 degrees opposite to each other. So the cosine of uh, zero would be one, the sine of zero would be zero, um, and vice versa. So they they are always 90 degrees apart from each other. And so we by when we're in scratch, we use sine for of the direct, the angle um, for the x direction and uh, cosine for y. So uh, these are just trigonometric functions that uh, give us diff basically. If you look at the circle here, um, if you imagine that it it is a length of one from the center to the edge, um, that's going to be. So if it's a length of one, then in the x direction here, that's one. In the y direction, that's zero, because we're still at the same point as the center. So it's not up or down from the center when we get to this edge. It's just zero. 
and um, at, we go in the x direction one. Here, if we're going to the other side, we go to the x direction negative one, and still zero for y. If we go up to the top, that's one, but it's zero in x because we haven't gone left or right. And if we go down, it's going to be um, negative one, and again uh, zero in um, the x direction. So, and but as you go around the curve, it's not going to be zero or one. It's going to be close to one, but it's going to vary as you go around the curve, and that's what sine and cosine give us. It's going to give us how much in the x and y direction we go to get to that that particular point of the edge of the circle at that angle. So that's what we're. That's why we use these functions. Is they let us give. Uh, match things to um, always be the same length uh, no matter what angle we're pointing in. Because if we, for instance, we're going in this direction, um, so, um, and we just said uh, one for both x and y, we would end up at a corner of a, a square over here which would make us travel faster when we're going in that direction than if we're going in this direction. Um, and so we don't want that. We want to always be consistent in how fast we're going, regardless of what direction we're, we're going. And so that's why we use sine and cosine. I hope that's reasonably clear. Trigonometric functions are a little more advanced, but they are super useful anytime you deal with circles or with um, uh, curves and things. Now the other thing we, we kind of skipped over here is fire missile. And so fire missile, um, and we have a little note here. Uh, we have a timer, and the timer is built in. Every, every um, scratch uh, sprite has a timer. And so we just check to see if it's been uh, 0.2 seconds, so one-fifth of a second. Um, if it hasn't been yet one-fifth of a second, we don't do anything. If it has, then we create a clone of the missile sprite and we reset the timer. Everything else about firing the missile and the direction it's going in and everything is carried out by the missile sprites code. We just create a clone of it. Uh, and we reset the timer so that we don't keep firing every frame. We don't want um, the missiles to be too close together. So we, this creates a little bit of spacing between them uh, so that we don't... Um, we're not just creating a, a solid line of missiles going across the screen. And we can adjust how much space there is between them by adjusting this uh, point two right here. If we increase it, there'll be more space between missiles. All right, that's uh, all of the blocks so far. Uh, and so all of this is, um, so far we've gotten through check keys. Now we actually want to move the sprite. And so we're going to change our, our custom variable of x by x speed that we've set if, uh, according to all our, our acceleration, um, and y by y speed. That's pretty, pretty um, basic right now. Then we check this thing, edge type. And so edge type could be two different things. It could be bounce or it could be um, wrap or wrap around, I think wrap. Um, if it equals bounce, then we're gonna call the bounce block. And if it's not, then we call wrap around block. And we're gonna look at those in just a second. If abs of x, what is abs of x? Abs is a function that takes the absolute value of a number uh, and the absolute value basically just strips off the negative if, if there is one. So if this is 10, it's still 10. If it's negative 10, then it's also 10. So the, the absolute value, if the absolute value of x is greater than 240, or the absolute value of y is greater than 180, why those numbers? Uh, then hide. Otherwise, show the sprite and go to those x and y coordinates. So in those ca that case, our our scratch x and y would now match the x and y that we're tracking in our own variables. Now this is uh, how we do our advanced movement 
So this is basically uh, if X and Y are in the screen. So if you go to past uh, 240 in the X or negative 240 if you're going left, 180 or negative 180 uh, going up and down, then you're, you're actually outside of the screen. So in that case, we just hide the sprite. Um, we keep tracking our X and Y to know where the, um, where the sprite is, um, but we don't bother moving it on the screen anymore. If it is with, if it, if it's not outside of the screen, then we show it and we go to that position. That lets us do three things. It lets us do hide, it lets us do bounce, and it lets us do an extended screen where we could actually make the, um, the space that we can fly around in bigger than the screen. So we could fly off and turn around and come back in a different place or fly off and be off the screen for a little while and then come back. So we can have hidden areas. Um, and we can use that to make the, um, the movement of the, the asteroids look a little more realistic, for instance, because right now they disappear as soon as the center of the asteroid goes off the screen and then reappear as soon as the center comes on the screen. But if we extend the screen, then they'll drift off, then disappear, and then, will they? I think they still disappear at the edge. Anyways, uh, with a little more work, we could probably do that. Um, so we have um, bounce. So this is, um, we when we call initialize, we set what kind of um, screen edge handling we want. The bounce just does the same thing as if on edge bounce, which is the, a block in our motion uh, blocks. It does the same thing as that, except why would we do this ourselves? Well, because we have the capability to extend the edge of the screen. And so if we say the screen is 200 pixels larger, like the area that we can fly around in is 200 pixels larger than the screen, our bounce will still work because it takes that into account. It takes this max X and max Y into account. Um, otherwise it works just the same as if on edge bounce. Wrap around is different. Wrap around is what lets us fly off the edge of, fly off one edge of the screen and reappear on the other edge. And that just um, you know checks if our X is less than zero, uh, less than negative max X, um, to take it in, into account any uh, extra space we've given ourselves, um, then we mul we change x to be off the edge in the other direction. Now we're still moving in the same direction, so we will then fly in onto the other side, um, and it does that for all the all four edges. So uh, it's a fair amount of code, but it's just, it's very repetitive. It's the same thing over and over just for different edges. So that's bounce and wrap around. And then that's the end of move, the move block. So then the last piece is check collisions and check collisions is pretty simple uh, for the ship. If we're touching an asteroid, we switch to explosion, play boom, and then stop. Now, Almost everything, as far as the um, uh, sounds and um, well, the costumes, I guess, are all custom. I hand drew the co the um, the costumes for these, um, and the sounds were all taken from uh, sounds in Scratch that you can pull up through um, through the sounds menu, except for. Um, uh, there's the space noise, um, except for boom. So boom, boom is just me saying into the microphone and then using the robot effect and um, making it louder. So I think it would be fun to do a, uh, a game where all of the sound effects were just uh, the person saying sound into the, the microphone like pew pew. Uh, I haven't done that yet, but this one I couldn't find a good um, sound effect in the scratch library for the ship exploding. So I just said, kapow. <laughs> Never be afraid to just experiment and play around with these. All right, that's the ship. Let's take a look now at the code for the asteroid. 
So the first thing is when green flag is clicked, we set number of asteroids to zero, and then we hide. And hide is just in case somebody has um, clicked here to show the asteroid, um, because we don't want to, we don't want to actually see the base asteroid. We never use the the original asteroid. We only actually interact with clones, and that's how we can have lots of them floating around. Now we had three different sizes of asteroids, and um, that's done through a little bit of code and different costumes. Uh, so we don't resize the the asteroid. We have actually different costumes. So we have um, three, one large asteroid, I think three medium sized and two small. And again, you can't see them very well because they're white on that transparent background. Um, but you can trust me, or you can look at the code. Uh, just follow the link in the description. So the, what we sent uh, as a message from the ship during initialization was create large asteroids. And so this loops three times, calling a custom block called create large asteroid. Now, why would we have a custom block and call it here instead of just calling uh, one, maybe we could make a message to do this and call it three times from the the ship and part of that is um, I actually I tried that and I ended up with four asteroids and I couldn't figure out why I was getting four when I only called it three times um, but actually I think it was more than four so the first time you call it it created a, a large asteroid um, but that was then listening to this message as well so when I called it again both the asteroids now, the original that is hidden and the new one we just created, would then call would then create a new asteroid. And then when I called it a third time, yeah, I was ending up with nine. That's what it was. Um, all three or all f was it? anyways, however many it was. Um, yeah, so at, after calling it twice, there would be calling it once there would be one on screen, but two really. then, Call, they would both call and they would create uh, two more, so there'd be three on screen plus one hidden, and then call it again, and it would uh, make four more, so there'd be three, four, seven uh, visible asteroids, um, which is not what I wanted. <laughs> so uh, I created a custom block to actually create them, uh, and then I send a message and call that custom block three times, and then I end up with actually three three asteroids. So I only call the message once. And part of the reason I have a loop instead of just having this block three times is when we get to things we can add, we could change this um, number to be a variable. And in the arcade game, uh, whenever you cleared the screen, you would get more asteroids. But you wouldn't just get three more. You would It would increase how many asteroids you get to start with uh, would increase every screen, so it would get progressively harder and harder um, as as the game went on. So we can create uh, a variable here, and um, when we uh, have cleared all of the asteroids, we could increment this. So it would create three, and then four, and then five as we as we progress. All right. So now I have um, when I start as a clone. So this is where um, the asteroid's behavior really begins. So when I start as a clone, so um, and all of these create asteroids are going to create a clone, we increase the number of asteroids by one. So we have a, um, a shared variable between all of the asteroids, which is number of asteroids. That's why it's capitalized as a shared variable. And um, every time we create an asteroid, we increase it by one. And every time we remove an asteroid, we decrease it by one. So we can always track how many of them there are on screen. Or, yeah, on screen. We show it because the base asteroid is hidden. So when we clone that, it would, already, it would also be hidden. Uh, and then we each asteroid has its own um, game loop, its own forever loop, in which it moves and checks collision. Now, the, the, the ship had three custom blocks here. It had move and ch check collisions, but it also had 
uh, check keys for player input. But the asteroids don't need player input. We're not controlling the asteroids. They're just moving on their own. So we only ha need the move and check collisions. And those are very, very similar to what we have uh, for the ship, except that they don't have to handle things like acceleration. They don't change direction. Um, they they don't accelerate. They just uh, have a, a direction when they start and a speed that they're going at, and they continue at that until they're destroyed or until they, the game's over by hitting the ship. So each of these create large, create asteroid, create large, create medium, and create small basically is an initialization block. Um, and we could probably um, create an initialization block that takes some arguments and trim this code down a little bit. But um, for now, it's it's a little bit repetitive. But each one is a little bit a little bit different. Um, some of it's the same. Each one sets a direction uh, that's random between 1 and 360. It sets a size, um, and the size is something we'll use later. Um, so the size is just large, medium, or small, depending on what, what um, um, the size of the asteroid is. Um, and switch costume. So large, we just have one costume. Um, medium has three to choose from, and then small has two to choose from. And we just use pick pick one at random from those. Uh, and this is interesting because switch costume two, um, you can pick it, you can pass in the name of the costume as a string, or you can pass in a number as an index. Uh, any of those will work to pick a costume. So we take advantage of that by using a random number here. Then we do something very similar to what we did with the ship. The ship always starts in the center, zero, zero, um, whereas the uh, the asteroids are going to start at a random position in a radius around the ship. And actually, this should be um, sine and cosine. It because the, they're fairly random, it doesn't um, show up as much when if the ship gets it wrong. When you're firing the missiles, it would really be obvious if you were doing the wrong thing because it would fire off to the side instead of um, firing in the direction that you're going. So basically, uh, they all start in a random position 200 um, blocks away from where the ship is. So, um, sign, so whatever direction they're traveling in, um, 200 blocks away from the ship. That way there's no collisions instantly when the ship is created or when the, when the asteroid is created. It's not created on top of the ship or anything. We could make this number also random uh, and we could base it on a, a random direction, not the direction that the, the asteroid is traveling in. Um, those are also uh, some things we could, we could do to make it probably more like the, the coin operated game. Um, for ease, I just use the direction that we're going in and a fixed number here. Um, and then we set the X speed of the asteroid. This is going to be a constant. We don't change it. Um, the this asteroid is going to be traveling at the same speed uh, for its lifetime. And again, this should be sine. This should be cosine. So we set the speed and we just have a multiplier here of 1.5 and each of the different um, um, sizes of asteroids, as the asteroid gets smaller, the speed gets faster. So um, the large ones travel with a multiplier of 1.5, the medium at three and the small the smaller are also at three. Let's make the small four or five. Let's try five and see if that makes it too hard. They're going to be zipping along. That's right, right? X speed, Y speed, yeah. And I need to change those to sine and cosine. Uh, 
Okay. I think that's right now. So as you um, as you have to deal with um, smaller and smaller asteroids, they are um, there are more of them, and they are faster. So um, with the large asteroids, they pick a random direction to start with, and they have a rotation between negative two and two, and that's um, just so that they kind of spin around their own axis as they travel, just for fun. But that also we can do because the direction that they the sprite faces in doesn't matter for our movement because we've taken over the movement with our own x and y uh, and x speed and y speed variables. So we're not using um, the move block, which would just move in the direction that the sprite is facing. We're we have our own custom move block uh, so they can drift along in the direction they're going, regardless of where they're facing. The um, the medium and small sprites also have a random direction and rotation, but they are um, they are uh, starting. Where's the start point? Oh, because right, their start point. We don't set their start point based on the ship. They already have an X and Y before we clone them. Um, and that is going to be the um, the X and Y of the um, the ship. It's the um, asteroid that's breaking up. So if we hit a large asteroid and it breaks into three small, three medium asteroids, they will have the X and Y of the large asteroid that just broke up uh, before we delete it. And then, um, but it, but travel off in a random direction for it. And that's what the, actually the behavior we want. That's, we want the, um, the asteroids to be based on the position of the asteroid they broke up from. So the large, the medium and small both do that. But the large, um, they start in a random place. Just not on top of the ship. All right, so movement. Again, this is going to be similar to the ship, uh, but different because we don't have to handle acceleration. So we change x by x speed, y by y speed. Uh, we do the exact same thing. We check the edge type and choose bounce or wrap around. If we are outside of the screen, we hide. If we are inside the screen, we show, go to X, Y. And then we also um, just turn um, rotation degrees. So they basically uh, spin, have a random amount of spin as they travel through space. Wrap around works the same and bounce works the same. So I think that is everything. Nope, we still have to check collisions. So um, the asteroids check collision if they are touching the missile. If they are, they hide. We don't want to delete instantly because we want to create a clone of ourselves and do some other stuff. So we can't delete right away. Um, we create. We start a sound. So play the crunch sound. Uh, there we go, um, and that's one again one built into into Scratch. Um, we send a message: remove missile and wait. And we're gonna when we get to the missile, we'll look at that because when a missile hits the the um, asteroid, both the asteroid and the missile are destroyed. Uh, otherwise, the missile is going to continue um, and it's actually going to trigger this um, collisions over and over and over again and we end up with thousands of, of asteroids um, uh, so we want to remove the missile um, and we can't do that directly so we send a message and we wait till the missile has received it then um, Here's where we use the size of the asteroid. So if we had different sprites for the asteroids, for the large, medium, and small asteroids, we wouldn't have to do this. Each one could have its own block for check collisions, and it would um, it, it would do this itself, uh, do this, run this code. Um, we didn't wouldn't need this uh, if or you know checking what type 
or what size the asteroid is. But then we, for collision checking with a missile, we would have to say if missile collides with large asteroid, if co missile collides with small asteroid, if missile collides with medium asteroid, and have uh, a lot of repetitive code there. So I decided there would only be one sprite for asteroids, large, medium, and small, and we would just track the size on it. So here, um, if it's large, we're going to repeat three times and create three medium asteroids. Um, if it otherwise, if it's a medium asteroid, we'll repeat three times creating a small asteroid. If it's a small asteroid, it's just destroyed. So we don't do any of that. So there's no else on here. Like if to yeah, you know, if it's if it's for if it's small, we don't care. Now we're about to delete ourselves. We change number of asteroids by negative one to count down. And then we say delete this clone and the large and, and the asteroid uh, that has just been hit by a missile will uh, delete itself. Okay, that is everything for collisions. Missiles are even simpler. So when you fire a missile, it goes to where the ship is. It points in the direction of, of the ship, and then. Um, you set its initial X and Y to the X and Y of the ship. Its X speed and Y speed are set to the sine and cosine of direction times the missile speed, uh, which is just set to 12 for now because that seemed to work pretty well. Um, one thing about the missiles in this versus the missiles in um, something in, in the coin op game, I think the coin op game, the missiles are just little dots. Um, and so our missiles actually make it the game a lot easier because they're much bigger. Um, and so they, there's much more chance of them hitting one of the asteroids. And that's, um, that's the decision. You can always change them to be dots and, and see how you like the game that way. One of the things I like doing in these videos is giving you a fully working game that has lots of places where you can go in and make changes and make it your own. So that's one of the places you can do that. We start the pew sound. We show the missile. And then, uh, what do we have? 18 times we move. And that's just because um, we don't want to move forever. The missiles eventually just peter out. They, they only go so far and then they um, expire. And so after moving 18 times, we delete this sprite. If we receive the remove missile message, then we check, are we touching an asteroid? If so, we delete the missile. Now, the reason we have to have this if, we don't want to just delete the missile if we receive remove missiles, because then if one missile hit an asteroid, we, the asteroid sends out remove missiles and all the missiles would disappear. And we don't want that. We want just the, just the missile that's actually making contact with an asteroid should disappear. So that's why we have that if. Our move, we change X by X speed, Y by Y speed. That should be standard. We check the edge type. Again, this is exactly the same code as for the um, asteroids. Same with bounce, same with uh, wrap around, all exactly the same. We just dragged from, um, where is it? You can drag a whole script and drop it on another sprite, and that's what we did. I did that also from the ship once I had these working uh, and just made some modifications to not have to worry about acceleration and things. Um, otherwise, move, bounce, and wrap around are basically the same through all of them. Cool. So that is the tour of the code and the sounds and the, the costumes. And so what's left? Well, there's a few things missing. And I think you, uh, we've talked about a few of them. Uh, one is we don't have any code to detect when the last asteroid 
uh, is destroyed to start a new level. We aren't keeping score. We only have one life for the ship, whereas the coin-operated game uh, had multiple lives, and as your score went up, you could gain more lives. Um, if we do um, restart the screen, what's to prevent us from starting in a situation where we, uh, we're on top of an asteroid? Like, cause, um, well, I guess this is a multiple lives thing. So if we have multiple lives and we die, there's still asteroids drifting around. We don't know where they are. We can't start them uh, in a radius around the ship at that point. So we have a couple of options. Um, we could try and find a spot on the screen that isn't just either on an asteroid or just about to be pummeled by an asteroid. That seems like a hard job. Or we can do what they did in the coin-op game and give you a certain um, limited time of invulnerability. So I think in the coin-op game, your ship was blinking for the first five seconds or so. Uh, and asteroids could hit it without destroying it. In uh, in Scratch, I would probably make it um, give it like half ghost effect, and um, you, know, you could blink it too. That's, but I would just do the ghost effect for simplicity. And uh, if it while it's ghosted for the first maybe five seconds, um, asteroids can hit it and it's not destroyed. And that gives you time to just blast away and clear the asteroids in your immediate vicinity without dying. Um, when you when you restart with a new ship, so that's something we would want to do if we if we had to have multiple lives. Um, you would want to. Uh, you could also use um, what do they call cloud variables? So when we go to make a variable, we can uh, have cloud variables, and we could use that to keep track of high scores. So that uh, everybody like shares high scores. I think Asteroids is one of the first games to actually track high scores with the people's initials. So they gave you like three letters um, that a lot of games had, um, picked up after that. But I think I think Asteroids was one of the first. So you could do something like that. So we have um, uh, if we have multiple levels, we could also have each one start with more. Asteroids. I would still keep uh, three for the number of medium and small um, that are broken out of breaking a large one. But you could start with one more large one every time you increase the level. You could increase the large and small number when you break up. If you really want to make it hard, um, try it and see. Um, you could have a start screen to choose whether you have extended space around the edge uh, whether, and whether you um, use um, wraparound or bounce. So far, we've only really looked at wraparound. Bounce would actually make this game really difficult. Um, and one of the things that we haven't touched on at all and would be in another sprite uh, is UFOs. So in the coin op game, uh, periodically, a larger, a smaller, large UFO would appear on the screen and fly across, and you could blast it for extra points. But it could also shoot at you. And as the game progressed, they got more and more accurate at shooting you. Um, so you could implement UFOs. Um, you could have, if once we have multiple lives and scoring, you could choose uh, at certain levels of score to um, to go up in. Um, in points or go up to gain an extra life when you get enough points. Um, the original game also had an extra button that you could press on the keyboard for hyperspace, and that would teleport you to a random location on the screen um, and maybe blow you up. I think there was like a 10% chance of you blowing up just from hyperspace, plus, it didn't do anything to protect you from showing up where there was a, a um, asteroid. So it was a last ditch. Tons of asteroids are closing in on you. There's no way you can shoot them all. You could hit hyperspace and maybe, maybe survive. Um, later games, um, because asteroids was 
not just cloned by uh, people like us, but it was actually cloned by the manufacturer. They created uh, new versions of it. And one of the, the later versions, instead of hyperspace, had shields. So you had like a total of maybe five seconds of shield. So you could press the shield, shield button and it would raise a barrier around you that, that the rocks would, you know, I don't know if they would bounce off if, or if they would be destroyed on. I think they might have even been destroyed on it. Um, but once you used up your shield, then it was gone, uh, I think, until you until you started a, a new ship, a new life, or maybe got to a new level. You could restore it somehow, but um, but on a given level, once you used up your, your little bit of shield, it was gone. Um, so it was just for emergencies, but it was a lot more predictable than the hyperspace button. Um, the, the inspiration for a lot of... Um, the drifting and things in asteroids came from an earlier game called Space Wars, which had two ships and, and not the drifting rocks, but it had a, a sun in the center that could affect you by gravity and would destroy you if you collided with it. Um, and so the hyperspace button and the wraparound screen and the extended space all came, and bouncing, uh, all came from um, Space Wars. And we made actually implement space ores in a future episode of this uh, using a lot of this same code. The, um, the other piece of the, uh, that isn't very accurate to um, um, asteroids is, is the bounce. So again, I think bouncing would actually make it really hard, but I wanted to see, I wanted to show you how um, bouncing, uh, basically if you had to implement it the if on edge bounce yourself how it would work um and show you that you can do it you can extend the screen so let's let's try that i'm going to change a couple of things here in our initialization so we're going to change two places we're going to change edge type to bounce and extended space to 200. So we're going to go 200 pixels uh, of extra space around every edge. So 400 pixels uh, total on the top and bottom and on the um, left and right edges. So let's try that and just see how hard it... Okay, so the, sh the rocks immediately fly off. Uh, where'd they go? Okay. Oh, no, there they are. Just took a while to come back. Now my missiles are also going off into the, off the edge. But I haven't hit anything yet because I'd hear a sound. Okay, I said this was going to make it a lot harder, but... I think I shot myself. All right, let's try that again. Maybe we should make it less, um, less than 200. Let's tr just try bounce by itself first. Make sure it's working. Yeah. Oh, died. So you can see once the, the small bits start flying around, when they're bouncing, it's it's really hard to avoid them. I would probably have to fly down into a corner or something. Um, I have to admit, I was never particularly good at asteroids. I found the the navigating, the the flying, and the shooting and the missiles uh, to be very difficult. So that's part of why one of the reasons uh, I like the um, larger missiles. Okay, so bouncing works. Uh, extended space. We can try extended space without bouncing. Maybe that'll be a little more um, interesting. Uh, maybe we'll make it just 100. Maybe just 50. That'll be 100 total. Um, make that wrap. All right. I'm pressing the wrong key. Yeah, the, the faster moving small missiles are definitely more challenging. Oh, I got lucky there. 
Oh, I keep pressing the wrong key. Okay, uh, you get the idea though. So uh, extended space works, um, bounce works, and I'm gonna set that back to zero. Uh, now let's just um, at least detect when um, the ship, when the game is over. And what do we need to do to start a new game? Um, so if oh, I need code here, or a new level. So we don't need to initialize because the ship is already set up and play is already going. So, but we just, I think we just need to call this. And so when we have checked collisions, no, you know what? I think this makes the most sense. When we check collisions here in the, uh, we're in the, the asteroid and we change the number of asteroids by negative one at that point if there are no more asteroids then we should uh, create three new asteroids so let's try that so we need an if block so we've Let's see, change by negative one. So if number of asteroids uh, oh I need a, is zero or I mean I don't think we can get negative, but let's just to be careful. Um, cause maybe something happens where we can go negative somehow if it's less than one, so zero or some negative number, if we happen to get there, um, then we want to send a message and wait, I guess doesn't hurt. Um, so create large asteroids. All right, let's see. Can we get through this now? Uh, well, not if I don't hit shoot. <laughs> this is going to be hard. All right. <laughs> one strategy, <laughs> one strategy in the game that I'm not following. Um, from the old version is to only blow up one of the big asteroids at a time so you don't end up and then clear away all of the debris from it before you end up with lots and lots of little rocks hurtling around very fast so i may not be able to get past this level now that we've made the game harder by making the the small rocks faster but uh, i'm gonna try one more time and then i'm gonna call it a day but yeah no. It's, uh, <laughs> we've made it too hard for me. Um, but anyways, you see the game. There are lots of places you can go in and tweak it and add details and make it your own. Uh, I think that uh, it's at a really good starting place. It's actually, it's not quite at the level of the old coin-op games, but it's actually pretty close. This is one of the most uh, advanced uh, games that we've created in this um in the course of these videos so far, and we'll look at um, look at creating more like this as we go um, further. But uh, I hope you have fun with it. I hope you've learned some some new techniques for how you can take control of the movement uh, and go beyond just the blocks that um, that Scratch gives you for movement, which are great for getting started. But you can do um, a lot more by kind of taking over some of that. It it means maintaining more variables of your own, uh, but the results can be really um, quite quite uh, quite good. And so I think I um, uh, hope you've had as much fun with this as I have. 
and I'll see you back here in two weeks. And until then, um, see what you can do with the, the code here, see what you can add to it to make it cool. Um, you can use the feedback form in the description of the video to let us know what you liked, what you don't like, what you'd like to see more of, any scratch questions you have. I would love to help out and do a segment on these shows where I'm answering actual questions that people have or problem, helping solve problems that you run into. Uh, anything like that um, is fine. Just put it in the form and uh, and we can address it in the in the future shows. So thanks for coming. Thanks for your time and uh, have fun with Scratch.